Welcome to Investment Insights from Perch Wealth, your ultimate guide to smart real estate investment and achieving your financial goals. Your host, Ehud Gersten, is a renowned expert and the founder of Perch Wealth. His team specializes in 1031 exchanges and breaks down complex concepts into digestible strategies for financial independence. Dive deep into the world of investment, from the intricacies of 1031 exchanges to expert insights on real estate investments. Hi, I'm Ehud Gersten. Let's get into it. In this podcast, I want to discuss the significance of 1031 exchange cooperation clauses in documentation. A 1031 exchange differs from a traditional real estate transaction, making it crucial for exchangers to notify all parties involved that the pending transaction will be part of a 1031 exchange. This is because additional steps are required to ensure compliance with Internal Revenue Service regulations. In a typical sale, the seller directly transfers the title to the buyer who provides the funds at the closing. However, in a 1031 exchange, a third party must be involved throughout the entire transaction to safeguard the exchanger's interests. This podcast explores the importance of 1031 exchange cooperation clauses and their role in exchange documentation. In order to successfully complete a 1031 exchange, Exchangers must adhere to numerous rules and regulations set forth by the Internal Revenue Service. Many of these stipulations involve the cooperation of the other party involved in the sale or purchase transaction. By including 1031 exchange cooperation clauses in your purchase or sales agreement, you proactively inform the other party that the intended transaction is part of a 1031 exchange. These clauses serve to communicate the expectations placed upon the other party and outline their role throughout the various stages of the transaction until completion. The primary purpose of the 1031 exchange clause is to explain to the other party that they will be required to sign additional documentation to facilitate the exchange process. It is crucial to emphasize that there is no additional cost or liability imposed on them. The inclusion of this clause is a formality rather than a legally mandated element in a 1031 exchange purchase or sale agreement. While it may seem like a minor detail, the presence of a 1031 exchange cooperation clause holds significant importance. Without such a clause, exchangers could potentially find themselves liable for substantial capital gains, tax bills, if the second party refuses to cooperate with the conditions of the exchange. Any misstep during the exchange process, such as missing a deadline, could invalidate the exchange and result in a straightforward sale triggering taxable events on the realized capital gains. By incorporating a 1031 exchange cooperation clause, both parties can establish a clear understanding of their respective roles and responsibilities, reducing the risk of potential complications or disagreements during the exchange process. It serves as a proactive measure to ensure smooth cooperation and compliance with IRS regulations ultimately safeguarding the tax benefits and financial outcomes sought through the 1031 exchange. Let's look at the mechanism of a 1031 exchange clause. A crucial aspect of a 1031 exchange is the involvement of a qualified intermediary throughout the sale and purchase transactions. The exchanger is prohibited from accessing the funds generated from the sale of the relinquished asset, which must be handled by a third-party exchange accommodator, also known as a qualified intermediary. Similarly, the exchanger cannot directly acquire a replacement asset. Instead, the qualified intermediary acts as the seller of the relinquished asset and the buyer of the replacement property in a 1031 exchange. To facilitate this process, both the sale and purchase agreements must be assignable to the exchange accommodator. By including a 1031 exchange clause in these contracts, the taxpayer declares their intention to carry out a 1031 exchange with the properties involved. Additionally, the clause establishes the necessary language to assign the contracts to the qualified intermediary. Some examples of 1031 exchange clauses are below. Please note that these are intended as examples only, and you should consult your own legal counsel or appropriate professional before signing any contract or agreement. Example 1. A 1031 exchange clause for relinquished property. The clause would read, The buyer acknowledges that the seller intends to execute a 1031 exchange. The seller requests the buyer's cooperation in facilitating this exchange and agrees to indemnify the buyer against any claims, costs, liabilities, or delays arising from the exchange. The buyer consents to the assignment of this contract to a qualified intermediary. Example 2. 
1031 exchange clause for relinquished property. Here the clause would read, the seller is hereby informed that the buyer intends to acquire the property as part of a 1031 exchange. The seller agrees to cooperate in this exchange, provided that it does not cause any delay in the closing or result in additional expenses for the seller. The seller consents to the assignment of this contract to a qualified intermediary. While not a legal obligation, incorporating a 1031 exchange clause into your purchase and sales agreement serves two crucial purposes. Firstly, it signifies your intention to carry out a tax-deferred exchange, providing clarity to all parties involved. Additionally, it informs them that these agreements will be assigned to an exchange accommodator, streamlining the process and ensuring compliance with the legal requirements. For more information, don't hesitate to reach out to the experts at Perch Wealth. Thank you for listening. The following are the real estate and 1031 risk disclosures. There's no guarantee any strategy will be successful or achieve investment objectives. All real estate investments have the potential to lose value during the life of the investments. The income stream and depreciation schedule for any investment property may affect the property owner's income bracket and or tax status. An unfavorable tax ruling may cancel deferral of capital gains and result in immediate tax liabilities. All financed real estate investments have potential for foreclosure. These 1031 exchanges are offered through private placement offerings and are illiquid securities. There is no secondary market for these investments. If a property unexpectedly loses tenants or sustains substantial damage, there is potential for suspension of cash flow distributions. Costs associated with the transaction may impact investors' returns and may outweigh the tax benefits. Tax benefits are not guaranteed and are subject to changes in the tax code.